in terms of your CFL journey, you're with Edmonton, Hamilton, and Montreal, and then your career ended in 2017. Did you like? Why did you walk away from football? Oh, so I was still on a contract with Montreal, and um, I had a. Uh my daughter in 2017, the end of 2017. So while in the off season, um, you know, we was talking about, I remember them sending emails. Okay. Camp starts this time, this time. And I'm just like, man, I don't feel like going back and forth up there with my daughter. I'm healthy. Um, I think it's time for me to walk away. Let me find something before I do make that decision. So I applied for a job uh, with Miami-Dade County um until i was able to apply for the uh miami-dade county being a firefighter so i had a job prior to this and then but that was just to get in and allow me to you know build some um some time inside the county but i was like let me make this sacrifice for my family um so me and my fiance we said forget it and like hey i'm done I'm not going back. <laughs> I'm gonna focus on the next chapter in my life. Psychologically, like what was that experience like for you walking away from a game that you had dedicated virtually your entire life to, having so much success at the highest levels, and then making the conscious decision, hey, you know what? Like we're about to expand our family. It's time to walk away. It was easy because it was hard earlier. And uh, so it was easy in 2017 walking away because I was done in 2015, <laughs> 2015. I was done mentally. Uh, I was already uh, I was a free agent and I got offered a signing bonus that I couldn't turn down. But I had applied for Miami Day fire in 2015. Um, and once they gave me the signing bonus, I was like, yeah, I can't turn down this much money. So uh, it was like, OK, I'll go play. It is what it is. I'll keep, I'll keep playing. I'll see what's up. And I did that. It, it was mostly because of, you know, at the time I had a little I didn't have my it's not like I had my daughter, but 17. It was like once I had her. I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I'm done. That's my sign to just hang it up. And I was OK with that. What does it mean to you to be seen as more than just a football player? Uh, it means everything. Because um, I hate when people, my biggest thing is when people say, oh, so why didn't you go into coaching? And I'm like, God, oh, why, why? Is, is that just the, the number one thing? It, it, that's what, you know, that's what, that's an easy transition for football players and stuff, but that's all people see you as. And I'm not saying that it's done uh, maliciously, but I just don't want people to see me as just that. And I just wanted to do something totally different that they wouldn't expect. Uh, so I was like, fire is, is it brings back the medical side of things that I that I love. And you still got to be in good enough shape to put that gear on and hump up some stairs with almost weighing almost 300 pounds. So you got to be able to do it. Well, actually, more than 300 pounds with all the gear and everything. So it's, you gotta be able to be in shape with it. I was curious about the temperament as a quarterback and kind of how that translates over into being a, a civil servant as, as a firefighter. And I, I read this about you, um, your captain during your three month probationary period. Um, he said, Ja'Cory's probably the best rookie he's ever had because he's always calm and collected and he picks up skills so quickly so you have that calm collected and you pick up skills quickly like that's your mentality and vibe would you say that comes from football and you're able to take that and just put it right into being a firefighter it does you know and I, I thank him for saying that I was his best one of his best rookies I'm pretty sure there there are guys there are some great guys on the fire service and uh that I respect uh so I, I wouldn't be able to say I was the best rookie but I really appreciate that but um yes um, being a quarterback does help like tremendously because we had, I remember it was firefighter survival week. And, um, that's when they put you through the maze. They make you do all these things to, uh, pretty much test your, 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 uh, your mental capacity and see how far you can go, how far you can push yourself. And 
during those scenarios, I wouldn't say it wasn't it wasn't hard. It wasn't easy, but it wasn't hard <laughs> because mentally in my mind, I know how to talk to myself and tell myself, hey, look, it's just a normal day. Keep it going because I used to do those things on the football field. So being through going through some scenarios on the football field where you got these 300 pound dudes coming to hit you and try to kill you and you got to sit there cool, calm and collective or if you're down by 20 something points, you got to bring your team by mentally. Now you have to be able to keep a bunch of guys in it still while you're still dealing with what you got to deal with. So it's, um, it's, it's, it helps a lot because I could do it. I know how to by myself, get myself out of stuff mentally. And then also I can talk to people and teamwork wise, I can help get us through a scenario, get us out of a situation. What's it like serving the community that helped shape the man you are today? Cause I think that's one of the, the coolest parts about your story, Ja'Cory, is that you were born in Miami, raised there, played college football at the university of Miami. Um, and now you're back, you know, as, as a civil servant in, in Miami, the area you grew up. It's cool. It's, it's, it's literally a blessing, man. Cause it's been some times where certain uh, areas that I worked in, like when I, my first three months, I worked in Liberty City, where my high school is. And it, it was cool going on calls and you see people looking at you and they like, hold on, I know this kid from somewhere. And then and he, I won't I never say anything. But then I see they'll be like, you, you to Corey. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like. And yet, mind you, they might be in an emergency situation where their life might be on the line or something. I had people like, hey, hold on, you to Corey? Like, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, that's that's me. I had kids, um, kids that uh probably watched football, watched me growing up, you know, say the same thing. And a lot of people, you know, I've gained a little bit of weight finally which i was trying to do in college don't you love when that how that happens dude it's like when we when we don't want it to happen it happens it happens when we don't <laughs> want it to happen it happens so everybody's seeing me now they like they they don't recognize me at first but they're like i know this guy he looks so familiar and they keep staring at you and there was only one time um with some kids it was a a guy uh got bit up by a pit bull they were late night playing basketball he got bit up by a pit bull and uh, the, all the kids was out there standing around. So I seen some of the kids had on FIU shirts. Uh, so I knew they was in high school, probably think considering colleges and stuff. And they looked like football players or athletes. So I started talking to them. I'm like, hey, y'all go to FIU? And one of the guys was like, yeah, I go. To, I just became a freshman up there. I play football there. I'm like, oh, tell Coach Ice I said what's up. Tell this guy, tell Brandon Harris, tell this guy I said what's up. And they're like, oh, you know them? Like, yeah, 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 I know them. Oh, okay, okay. So then they start looking, and I hear them like over, like over the like whispering, "That ain't your Corey Harris." Yes, it is. That is that is him. He didn't got a little bit bigger, like just like that. And then they <laughs> finally, so they, I forgot what they said. They said something, and I leaned over. I was like, and I was like, "Yeah, that's me." And then it was like, "I told you, I told you, I told you." So they was excited to see that, and then. This is where it makes me even more happy is that afterwards, after they figured it was me, then they start asking, how can I become a firefighter? And that touched me more than if they were to ask me, how, hey, man, how can I uh, make it to call it being a football player? Like, I feel like that that civil servant and, uh, and this job and being around these guys made me realize there's more to life than, you know, than sports. And sports is a great thing. It, it helps mold you and shape you and build you into the person you are. But in order to contribute to this world, I feel like you have to um, you got to pre provide something of, of benefit for the people. And uh, I feel like that's what this job embodies. So it, it's helped me. Um, it helped you become a better person. It helped you, you know, learn to treat people with respect. Everything is you start caring more. So I, I love this job. One of the final questions I wanted to ask you, do you feel fulfilled today in this moment? Yes, I feel fulfilled. I feel like 
especially with football, I feel like I've accomplished everything that I could have accomplished. I don't watch the game saying, dang, I wish I was still out there. Because as soon as I see one of the guys get hit, like when I seen Tua get hit in Cincinnati game, I was like, that is exactly why I'm done. Because I want to be able to function and be able to, you know, pick my daughter up and play with her and fight with her how she wants to fight with me every night. <laughs> I want to do those things with my daughter and be able to, you know, be functional around her. Because it's some guys that mentally – um NFL football has taken a toll on them. It's um it's broken them down, their bodies to where, yeah, they might have money in their bank account, but they can't do anything with it that they want to because they're walking around, knees hurting, body hurting, they're all broken into pieces. So um I'm fulfilled. I, I've I'm not fulfilled with fire. It's a new chapter. It's some I still have a lot that I want to accomplish with uh being a firefighter because I want to become a chief and I know it's going to take, it takes time and it takes uh many things that I have to do in order to accomplish that. But I'm, I'm here. I'm willing, I'm willing to, uh, to do it.